We're very excited to be joined on The Kelly Alexander Show by Emmy Award winning actor Eric Martsoff, who Hi, stars Hello, who stars on Days of Our Lives. I love that I get to say that, Days of Our Lives. I've never interviewed a Days of Our Lives actor before, except for Eileen Davidson, but she was on Young and the Restless at the Ooh, time. Ooh, so. well, God knows what show she's on. <laughs> she's it, on so many. She's like a little frog, on, and she goes on <laughs> many different toadstools. Is that what they're called, toadstools? Yes. She just jumps and jumps and jumps, yes. and every toadstool she's welcomed on because she, cause she's terrific. Is she on your show now? I can't keep track. But this interview isn't about no, her. No, it's about you. It's about you. It's all about you. <laughs> no, she, she's awesome, Okay, actually. awesome. So you interviewed her? Yes, and she was great, And but I've never had a Days of Our Lives actor specifically. I've only usually done the Young and the Restless people, so I'm very excited to have you on. I'll see what I can do. I'll try to represent my... Uh, you will do just fine on NBC. Emmy Award winning <laughs> 50th anniversary show. That's right. It's so pretty crazy. Before I take you down Days of Our Lives path, though, I have to talk to you about your career because if I've done my homework correctly you went to college not for anything to do with entertainment nothing to do with entertainment so why did you do that and then leave it well dad was a lawyer okay and when you grow up in Harrisburg Pennsylvania you don't really believe that 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 uh, going to Broadway or going to LA and being on a television show is anything tangible mm -hmm. whatsoever okay so but being a lawyer is tangible yeah. in Pennsylvania so okay. I went to Dickinson College in Carlisle Pennsylvania small liberal arts school I uh, graduated uh, honors Yay. in political science with an emphasis in mass media politics and constitutional law. Nice. I still remember that. I can rattle that sucker off, man. I worked hard for it, <laughs> so I deserve that. But I've never really, unfortunately, done anything with it. Okay. And uh, it, it was graduation day where my father looked at me and he said, so what are you going to do? And it was one of those adrenalized decisions where I looked at him and I said, I think I want to go to New York for a year. And not go to law school. I think I want to go like act. Wow. And without a beat, he just went, okay. Nice. That's great. Good. You, you light up on stage. I know how much you love it. Go, go enjoy it. Go wow. have fun. Well, that year turned into a career. So. <laughs> awesome. So now you've done, uh, I know you've done radio stuff, which is exciting to have you on with a radio announcer. I have. Did, do you want to, would you ever pursue like radio or hosting? Because I know you've done some of that as well, apart from your acting career. How funny you should bring this up, actually, because I, I just, just threw my hat into the hosting Yay. arena. Okay. It's something that I've always loved to do. Mm -hmm. It's something that I've always felt comfortable doing. Mm -hmm. But a couple years ago, agents and managers didn't want you to be a host because you were pigeonholed. If you're a host, you can't be considered a serious actor. Mm -hmm. If you're a serious actor, you can't be a host or you can't do commercials. And that was the mentality years and years ago. Nowadays, you see Halle Berry doing uh, makeup commercials. You yeah. see Matthew McConaughey doing car commercials. There's no more pigeonholing. Mm -hmm. there's, there's room for everybody to do everything that they're interested in, and there's no reason not to spread your wings in other genres and other activities in this industry. If you want to do it, go do it. So I've decided I've made a very uh, prominent decision to, to host, and I've, I've done a couple events in the last couple weeks. They've gone over very well. I just edited a hosting reel. Yay! Last week. Is that it's the on, on EricMartsoff.com. Yes, I watched it this morning. It's just cute. It's mostly it me cute. getting interviewed. That's the problem. Because <laughs> I haven't been on this side as right, much. Right, we should but. let you practice then. But you're already good at it. Because you, didn't you do something when you were on Passions? I saw you do like a hosting thing. I did DirecTV's first live call-in show. Okay. Which was essentially me for 12 episodes imploring people to get direct TV so they could continue watching their favorite daytime drama passions. Okay. And it worked. People actually, direct TV was very surprised and happy about it. Nice. Now, I wanted to ask you about passions and just the soap genre in general, because I remember I've been an avid soap fan for years and years and years. And oh, I remember. Oh, really? Oh, yes. It started with General Hospital. That's okay. I'll it still did. stay here. I'm going to continue good. to talk to her. But I still love Days of Our Lives. We love General Hospital. Um, but when I, in the mid-90s, there was like, I think, 16 soaps. You know, there was the big guns, like, I think days. there were like 402, Probably, actually. Probably, if you add in all the telenovelas. 402. Um, but, you know, there was Passions that came out, too. And then, you know, Loving. There was all these other ones. And then all of a sudden, they just started to drop off. And obviously, you were on Passions, and that happened as well. What was it like being on a show, you know, when the genre, in a way, started to decline? Was it scary for you? Did you think the genre in itself was going out the window? Oh, it was, it was a fright fest. Absolutely, I thought the genre, I thought it was dying. Mm -hmm. I had put all my eggs into this soap opera basket, so to speak, for lack of a better phrase, and I was watching what I love go away. And that's the way I now feed my kids. That's, I, don't, I put cereal on their table mm -hmm. through soap operas, mm -hmm. and that's, that's what I know. Mm -hmm. And the worst part about it, and this is dying slowly, this stigma, that once you do soaps, it's hard to break into other things. 
a lot of casting directors, uh, if you've done soaps, they consider you a soap actor. Yeah, and it's, it's such a rough thing because you can ask any primetime folk mm -hmm. uh, who have done daytime guest stars how hard it is. Yeah. It's, it's incredibly difficult. Sitcoms do about three or four pages a day. Mm -hmm. We'll do 90. We'll do 100. So you have to be so sharp. And I think those stereotypes are being brought down slowly but surely in casting offices around the world because we show up and we know our stuff. Mm -hmm. And can you, can that's you, important. Can you let the listeners know, who, you know what, a, what a sort of scene is like? Because I, I know you guys have like to, to do it in like one or two takes and then bang, you're on to the next scene, right? Like you don't have a lot of time to get this right. No, double takes are almost frowned upon. Okay. You know, Al Pacino, if he does a movie, he probably gets 30 to 40 takes wow. for a scene. You know, one of those is going to be good. That's just, you know, through mm -hmm. the odds. But the time is so important now. We're doing two episodes a day as opposed to one now. Wow. In order to save money, mm -hmm. we are off 20 weeks a year. Wow. When I started Soaps 14 years ago, we did one episode a day. You know, the way in which viewers watch it, it's one a day. Mm -hmm. Now they give us a lot of vacation so they can close the studio, save money. But they're like, can you guys just work twice as hard, please? Wow. We're going to do everything we've been doing on a quarter on a nickel. Can you give us an idea what a, an actual day is like on the set? Like what time you come in and, and is it like a 12 hour day, especially if you guys are doing two shows a day? Well, here's the rough part about what I do. And what I do is not that rough because I get to like sleep with women and, <laughs> and say words on nice camera. Body, no. <laughs> it's well, that, true, that's it's all, hot. No, that's the hard part, having to like keep that camera <laughs> ready. Gym. It's like, really? <laughs> sure, the scene. Oh my God, I can't eat for a week. But... um the days are completely different. Okay. My week is completely different from week to week. There is no regularity. Okay. There is no common schedule. And it's, I get my schedule the night before. Wow. My friends call me up. Can you have lunch tomorrow? I don't know. I'll okay. be able to tell you at 7 p.m. tonight when I actually get my call sheet for tomorrow morning. So it's hard with the family. It's hard to plan. It's mm -hmm. hard to plan vacations. Mm -hmm. Life in general is pretty nuts that way. But I'm kind of used to it now. Now, what is it like being on such a show like Days of Our Lives? It's been around forever. You just mentioned the 50th it's anniversary. Um, you guys have an amazing cast. A lot of the actors have been there forever. You've been there since 2008. Is it a real family? Because I think a lot of you know, viewers want to mm -hmm. know if you guys are super tight off screen as well. It's a great question. Um, it is a family. It's, it's unlike any other job in the sense that you're emoting with each other all day so you get to know each other very very well you know no matter no matter how hard i try to keep brady black brady black mm -hmm. eric is going to seep into there right. you know and and that's what you're supposed to do as an actor when you're hired you're not hired as brady you're hired as eric they mm -hmm. want what you have to bring to the canvas so we're all meeting each other very quickly learning so much about one another and that's a family and we fight you know <laughs> it's not a love fest all the time we get uh, with all that material and all that stress and all that desire to want to do it right the first time, mm -hmm. it's hard. And it's just like any other family, like at Thanksgiving, there's forks and mashed potatoes that are thrown across the table sometimes. <laughs> but then right after that, you're hugging, you know, and it's, we, we hug as hard as we hit. Nice. nice. And I think that's, that's the truth. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I think a lot of casts, oh, we all get along all the time. It's so great. No, they don't. <laughs> that's ridiculous. That's a utopian idea. But that's what keeps our machine running, and that's why it has been a real family for this long. It's been 50 years. You have to remember, most shows are on maybe two, three, right. four seasons. Yeah. The majority of shows. Mm -hmm. To be on for 50 years is an accomplishment that sh you should not take lightly. How do you feel as a daytime actor when it comes to other shows? Because, again, we talked about how before there were so many of you, know, you guys. There were shows here, left there, and everywhere. And now it's kind of like the four big guns. GH, Days, Young and the Restless, Bold and the Beautiful, at least you know, in North America. Sure. Um, are you guys sort of uh, protective of all, of all of your colleagues because the genre has gone south so, so much? And when you see each other at the daytime Emmys, how important is it for you guys? You, you hit it on the head. Once again, you seem to I'm know trying. what you're talking about. I'm trying. <laughs> I, I noticed a huge change a couple of years ago at the Emmys. We uh, actually had them in Vegas. And that was right around when ABC had just thrown the axe down on All My Children okay. and uh, One Life to Live. Mm -hmm. Just in a huge... I mean, that was, that was, that was scary. That was yeah. like, oh my God, that's our San Andreas fault. Just, we're, we're all going away. And that night at that Emmy Awards, there was so much camaraderie. There was no competition. There was no talk of our actor being better than yours, our show being better than yours, mm -hmm. our makeup department. It was all about 
camaraderie because we all knew that we had to pull together because we all, this was our livelihood. Mm -hmm. We either join together now or we sink. Yeah. And what do you do? When you're on a boat that's sinking, you all work together to keep it above water. And I think that's what everybody has been trying to do ever since. Don't get me wrong, there's still that you know, competitiveness that's always going to live in the veins <laughs> of the, the body of this genre. But I think we all understand what we have to lose. Now, you've been in the genre for a while. We talked about your time on Passions and now on, on Days. Uh, you're now an Emmy Award winner. Whee! What did that feel yeah. like to, to be an Emmy Award winner for Best Supporting Actor on Days of Lives? Which I understand, it's if it's ridiculous. correct, was that you're the first daytime supporting actor for Days. Like, that must have been... I'm the first guy ever on Days of Our Lives to win in that category, Best wow. Supporting Actor. It was unbelievable. It was, for a guy who's in soap operas, it really doesn't get much better than that. That's mm -hmm. the pinnacle. Mm -hmm. That's it. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and for a guy who used to watch these things with his mom, she used to make me watch Young and the Restless. And I used to be like, why are Nikki and Victor fighting all the time? What is wrong with this dysfunctional couple? Why don't they just break up? P.S. they're still well, doing Eric, it. They can't break up because they have a baby and she's hiding it from him. I'm like, what? I'm like a seven-year-old kid. I'm like traumatized by these crazy stories. And there I am, you know, up there accepting this award. And it was, it was, it was... I don't know. You can see I'm kind of, mm -hmm. I'm usually not a loss for words, but I don't know how to explain it because it completely was unexpected. Mm -hmm. Did not prepare a speech. Yep. There were gentlemen in my category that had been nominated many, many times. This was my first nomination. Why would I get it? It goes against everything. Mm -hmm. But once again, you know, man makes plans and God laughs. laughs. He threw me a curveball and said, get up there. And it was a beautiful day for me. And how, how did mama feel when you... My mom? Yeah. She just cried her eyes out. Nice. She, uh, she cried her eyes out. Actually, I have a videotape of her. She was in Pennsylvania watching uh, online. Okay. The one year that yeah, I they win, it's online. Yeah, televise it, yeah. Really? I Seriously? Yeah. Like, can I do a do-over? Yeah. <laughs> can we just televise the whole thing? Um, but um, I think she, she watched the thing. And she went, oh, oh, oh shit. She started, <laughs> she started swearing. It was so atypical <laughs> of her to do that. And she just starts swearing uncontrollably. I'm like, oh, my God. So... <laughs> She obviously was legitimately surprised mm -hmm. as well. And now, for the rest of your life, you get to be introduced as Emmy Award winner Eric Martzoff. I do. You're a little I? red. He's a little red. It's good, though. It's good. Do you think all these people in this <laughs> lobby know that? <laughs> and now I, I should change the name on the reservation of my true. room, actually. It's true. It, we should I'm do that. I'm thinking about it. I have to ask you this because I've been fortunate to interview some of you uh, male actors from the daytime genre, and you guys always have to look like superstar Venus rock star gods with the abs and everything. Can you please tell us how much work it is? Because I, I feel like it's a lot of training going on to keep that for TV, because TV just adds 10 pounds anyway. It does add 10 pounds, and yes, we, we know what we signed up for okay. as men. We get it. Okay, they're going to ask us to gratuitously take off our shirt. Like, oh, I better fix this sink. <laughs> you don't need to take your shirt off to fix the sink, yes, but it's written does. that way. Um, no, it gets harder as you get older. I mean, I'm not a spring chicken anymore. Mm -hmm. I got to work four times as hard to look like what I tried to look at. But <laughs> but you you embrace it. You know, mm -hmm. you have to be okay, and that's the beauty of aging. You get more comfortable with who you are. Mm -hmm. When you're a kid, you just pump so hard you know I would do and when I was on Passions right. we would all just be sitting around doing push ups until oh, we man. just fell over <laughs> it was just ridiculous if you go back and you listen to the scene it's like Teresa I just I don't I love you but I <sighs> like, ah, cut what is wrong with him like, he was doing push ups he can't breathe like, oh, okay. I just can't talk you know, that's not the point and it's the characters that have thrived and that you remember mm -hmm. are not always the most beautiful to look at. They're mm -hmm. the ones that you, they're, they're the actors. They're the, they're the ones that bring it, that mm -hmm. you invest in. Because artwork is really nice to look at for a while. Yep. It's really pretty. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's nice. But you don't keep coming back every day to look at the same artwork. Mm -hmm. You keep coming back because there's something in it that, that moves you. And there's something about it that is interesting. And that's what I think is lost sometimes with some of the some of the younger actors these days. They think it's all about how they have to look. Right. No, it's not. It's more important to bring out what you got in there. That's more interesting. Are you guys very welcoming when a new cast member comes on or are you do you raz the crap out of them? <laughs> like I want to know that. A little bit, a little bit of both <laughs> okay. actually. We we actually have lately we have a bunch of young bucks coming in our hallways <laughs> right now. 
And I don't know what's going on with youth today. I mean, they are all sweet as can be. Mm-hmm. But and I've, I'm a father, so I feel entitled to talk about this. But there's a little entitlement thing going on. Like, True. oh, come on, this isn't so hard, whatever. And, oh. and then they get in it and they yeah. realize that what they've signed up for, that this mm-hmm. is a job. Mm-hmm. And the idea that it's easy to be on a soap opera is something that just needs to go out the window. Now, I saw that you tweeted yesterday because it just came down. When, you know, when our listeners will watch this, it'll be out for a little while. But uh, the decision in the States with regards to uh, marriage equality for the LGBTQ community. And I Boom. saw that you were very supportive of that. Oh, God. Yeah. What does it feel like to be on a soap that actually has, you know, uh, a gay storyline? Because not all the soaps are doing it. No, they don't because they're, they're afraid because they're afraid they're going to lose viewers. Mm-hmm. Because a lot, a lot of the demographic um, that watches soaps don't necessarily want to see that thing. We're still a country that is working towards that decision that we do. We want everybody to just be for it, but that's Mm -hmm. not the case. Mm -hmm. So for Days of Our Lives to take one of their larger demographics and say, you know what, this story's important anyway. Mm -hmm. You may not want to watch it, but we're putting this on and we're going to show it because it's our society today. Mm -hmm. I thought it was brave and I was very proud to be a part of that storyline. Still am. It's still on there. And these Mm -hmm. guys are, are running with it and I think they've done a terrific job. And I'm, I was so excited to hear about that. You know, I, I've, I've worked with the gay community for so long. I was on a Broadway tour, for God's sakes. <laughs> we got some gay community I'm, out I'm there sure on there the was. Broadway circuit. I don't know if you heard that. <laughs> I feel. Yeah. But no, I, no, I was on a bus as the only straight man <laughs> for about three and a half years. And they're just a beautiful bunch of people. And they just want to love. Nice. Let them love. You know? Excellent. Now, I want to throw a curveball at you. Not that you would want to switch places, but if you could split, switch places for a day with any other soap actor, whether it's on Days, YNR, GH, who would it be? Any other soap actor. Yeah, just for a day, just to see what it would be like. I feel like you want to say Victor from The Young and the Restless. Does it have to be on Days of Our Lives? No, it doesn't have to be. You could, you could say anyone else. I would, I, I would love to have Victor's lines. <laughs> It's true. All right. I think I think secretly he is another writer that writes for him. <laughs> just for him. Because he's just all, he's got the little, I don't know. He's clever. He's <laughs> very clever when he speaks. Maybe it's just the way he speaks. It's not the line. I don't know. Um, it would have been fun to be Sammy Brady for a couple of days too. Right. Just to be, just, just when you think Brady Black is emotional <laughs> and crazy. Enter Sammy Brady. <laughs> She's a you know hydrogen bomb that goes it's off true. every day. And that's fun. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't know. I would have to say I'd like, I'd like to be a combo of different characters. I'd like okay. to put them all in a blender. Let's see what happens. Like a Vitamix and just hit the button. <laughs> just be that character milkshake for a while. Nice. So any choice I made would never be wrong. It's true. Now, before I let you go, um, are you going to stay on Days Forever? Because we'd like you to. And, and do you have any... I know you're doing some hosting stuff coming up, but is there other aspirations? But please stay on daytime. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. I have said this before. I'll say it again. I don't know why the heck I would ever leave days of our lives. Mm -hmm. I love the job. I've been an employee of NBC for 14 years. They've always been good to me. Mm -hmm. And I I, I have a little loyalty issue as well. I tend to stay with things and ride the train. I don't like to jump off trains. Mm -hmm. I like to ride them to where they stop. Okay. And that's just kind of how I'm wired. Awesome. So, yeah, I'll stick around. Yay. I'll stay on it for a while. <laughs> uh, Emmy Award winning actor Eric Martsoff right here on the Kelly Alexander like Show. That. Thank you. Say that again. Eric Martsoff, Emmy Award winner on the Kelly Alexander so Show. So cool. Never gets old. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you.